In this module, we're going to build our own VPC, but this time we're going to do it an easier way. We're going to use the wizards that Amazon provides for us. We're going to create a VPC that spans all the availability zones in the US West 2 region. And the wizard's going to create a public subnet and a private subnet for us. It's going to create an internet gateway and a NAT instance. And it's going to create a route in the public subnet out the internet gateway. But then we're going to make changes because these are the only things that the wizard will make for us. We'll add additional subnets, one in each availability zone for public subnets, and one in each AZ for private subnets. We'll make sure the routing tables are correct in each one, and then we'll create a special routing table in the private subnets to allow routing out through the NAT instance. We're going to start off as usual with the management console. We're gonna create shortcuts in the management console for the screens that we'll be using, EC2 and the VPC, then we'll go to the VPC dashboard, and that's where we'll find the VPC wizard. The VPC wizard allows us to create four different configurations, a simple VPC with a single public subnet, a VPC with public and private subnets. This is the one we'll use in this example because it lays out all the internet gateway and NAT instances we need. We can also create a VPC with public and private subnets and a hardware VPN access to our data center, allowing us access to corporate data, for example. And then finally, a completely private subnet we can use as an extension of our corporate data center. So we're gonna create the VPC with public private subnets. We select it and then we'll change the CIDR address to 10.23.0.0 slash 16. We'll give the VPC a name. And you can see the subnets are in error because they aren't within the scope of the CIDR address. So we'll change this to 10.23.0.0 slash 24. And I like to follow a IP subnet addressing where the third octet tells me both what subnet, what AZ it's in, and also the function of the subnet. So a single digit octet I know is a public subnet, and if it's zero, it's gonna be an AZA. Same thing for the private subnets, only it's gonna be two digits starting with one for the first set of private subnets. You typically have many more private subnets than you do public subnets. So a third octet of one zero tells me it's a private subnet in US West 2A. We use an M1 small for an ad instance, and we're gonna allow DNS host names or DNS system to run inside of a virtual private cloud. We hit the button and we create the VPC. In working with the cloud, as much as possible, you want to avoid manual setups of things. Human fingers are error prone. They're also very expensive. It's difficult to replicate what you did manually. Do it again and again and again as you wanna build systems. Using things like wizards is much more advisable than doing things manually. You can see this all took place in less than 30 seconds. So the VPC has been created. We'll check to make sure the NAT instance has started up. It's up and running. You'll note on the lower right-hand side, the DNS name. Everything is set up correctly. Then let's look at the security group. We're using the default security group for the VPC, which basically says all traffic originating from the VPC itself is allowed into the NAT instance. Then the NAT instance will forward that traffic to the internet. So inbound from the VPC can go anywhere outbound any destination on the internet. Going back to the VPC dashboard, we can see the lab VPC has been created for us with the correct CIDR range, and both the subnets we asked for were created. You can see a public route table was created that allows the default route to be sent out the internet gateway for public subnets. But look here, here is the private route table, which allows us to send traffic out the NAT instance. However, it's not really a route table. It's the routing table associated with the main VPC. You can see it says main, yes. So what's happened is we've changed the default route for the entire VPC. You may or may not want that. I tend not to want that. I want the main route to be as restricted as possible because that gets inherited by all subnets. So first let's label the route tables so we know exactly who goes where. Call this lab VPC pub route. And we'll also label the main route table lab VPC so we understand which one's which. Now we're gonna go edit this one to remove the default route out the NAT. Again, we do this because this route is inherited by every subnet that doesn't have a route table associated with it. So now our default route will allow us to route traffic anywhere inside the VPC, but it will not allow default routes out to the internet. In order for default routing through the NAT, we'll create a separate route table. So we've created the route table. We'll add the default route that says that any traffic that's not bound for the VPC internally will be given to the NAT instance to send out to the internet. 
we'll refresh and we see that there's only one subnet associated with pub route, nothing associated with the private route. So we'll change our current private subnet to use this private route table. Okay, now we have the VPCs set up correctly with the routes that we want for the subnets that the VPC wizard created for us. But we want to make sure that we take advantage of all the availability zones inside US West 2. We're going to create two more public and two more private subnets in order to distribute traffic across these availability zones. You always want to make sure you have computing resources scattered as widely as possible inside of a region. It doesn't cost you extra to do it, and it gives you a higher degree of fault tolerance and availability. So we're setting up our public subnets, note the naming scheme, and the IP addressing scheme. So now we have a public subnet in each one of the AZs. Well, actually, we only have a public subnet in one of them. That's because the one in AZA is the only one that has a routing table associated with it. These eventually will be public subnets. Currently, they're only public subnets in name only. And now we create the final private subnet, signing it to availability zone C. Now let's go through and assign the correct route tables to each one of these subnets. We'll start off with the private route table. We'll assign it to the two remaining private subnets. As you can see, if you don't have a route table, you inherit the main route table for the VPC. Making changes in the main route table of the VPC can have unknown consequences. You really want to make sure that you completely understand what route table is going to be applied to the machines that you have in a subnet. We have assigned the public route table to our public subnets. Now they are truly public subnets because their default route is to the internet. So we're done. We've got three private, three public subnets in each one of the AZs in US West 2. We have them associated with the correct VPC. So we use the VPC wizard to start off with and then extended it to cover the whole region. Thanks for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on Learn More. Please don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials. And be sure to like us on Facebook.